Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is Monday, April 24th, 2023. Apple released a new product. It's a savings account with 4.15% APY. We're going to talk about that today in Web3. Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. Before we get into today's headlines, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, share, hit the bell icon if you're here on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please click those five stars and leave us a comment there. It helps us get the word out. And one more thing. And one more thing. If you're in any kind of groups, Telegram groups or Facebook groups that relate to tech, investing, Web3, crypto, please help me out so we can get daily Web3 news to everyone in 15 minutes or less heading up to the next bull. So I'm going to preemptively say thank you for doing that, helping me grow the channel. Let's get into today's headlines. Apple's new product is a savings account. And I know it's not the normal thing that we're talking about here is Bitcoin, Web3, NFTs, AI, and so on and so forth. However, I think this is very significant because we all have some kind of savings. If either it's in Bitcoin, Ethereum, stable coins, cash, we might be just holding a lot of cash because we want a BTFD and that's either in the stock market or in crypto. But what do we do with it in the meantime? Now, we know that inflation is at 5% right now. And so our money is just sitting in the bank, losing actual buying power. And so how do we mitigate that? Now, remember, this is nothing new to people who have money or people who've been holding digital assets. That's why BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager all became very popular because they paid you an APY. Maybe their APY was a little bit unrealistic and their practices were a little bit unsavory. They failed. They went bankrupt. People lost their money. The thing is, is we still have the same problem. Where do we park our cash to hodl? And so if you're holding Ethereum, you could put it in staking and staking will pay you about 4% APY, even more 5%, 6%, depending on where you put it. If you have stable coins, where do you put that? These earn programs from Gemini and Coinbase are under scrutiny by the SEC. They're saying that this is security and you can't do this. But at the same time, now that we have these banks and traditional brick and mortar banks, they don't offer these kind of APYs. It's these new online banks, these SOFIs, these SITs, and so on and so forth. But do you really trust an online bank? And if there is ever a problem, do you have good customer service? That's honestly why I've been holding cash in my savings account, because I haven't really said, hey, you know what? Even though you're FDIC insured, I don't know if I can want, if I want to deal with if the bank goes up, the possibilities of a bank run, the possibilities of your website closing down, and then dealing with the hassle of trying to get my cash out. So when Apple said they're making a savings account, even though it might be a little bit less than you can find other places, so I'm thinking to myself, the biggest company by market cap is a safe way to earn a little percentage on my cash. So what are they offering? Again, like I said, they're offering a 4.15% APY and it's a savings account. It has no minimum balance and it has no monthly fee. However, you need to have an Apple credit card to be able to use this service. Some people are calling this a drawback. I've watched a lot of videos over the weekend saying that this is the catch. If you have a credit card anyway, just apply for the credit card. There's no fees for this credit card. There's no minimum spends. There's no uh, yearly annual fees. So why not just get the card? Open the savings account. It's not a drawback. It's not like it's saying use the credit. It's saying open the credit card. So I don't see this as being a real big drawback. One of the drawbacks is if you are, you know, somebody that's hodling a lot of cash, there's a limit of how much cash you can put into the savings account. They are only going to allow you to store or put in as much as the FDIC insurance is for, and that's $250,000. So if you have more than that, you might have to open two accounts, maybe one for you, one for your spouse, maybe one for you, maybe one for your business or other LLCs or whatever S corps that you might have. If that's allowed, I haven't tried that, but then you can store more than $250,000. However, I think this is a good practice. They're saying, hey, we don't want you to get screwed. We don't want to be screwed ourselves and it come out of Apple's, you know, iPhone money. So we're only going to allow you to store $250,000, which is insured. Now, like I said earlier, there's a lot of different banks that offer more. Citbank, Upgrade, Bread Savings, SoFi, they all have a higher APY. We're talking about 4.75%, 4.56%, 4.5%. And that's going to earn you just a little bit more money if you have a significant amount of money in the banks. It's going to be a significant amount at the end of the year. Say if you put $100,000 in the savings account, between the Apple savings account and the Citbank is going to be a difference of around $600 plus. That's significant. Me, personally, i rather have the safety of Apple. I know you're going to say, these banks are just as safe as any other banks. And I'm going to say, yeah, you're probably right. However, the safety of the world's biggest company 
plus Goldman Sachs gives me a little more security to do this whole online banking thing and they can hold a lot of my cash. Now these online banking resources also have CDs you can put your money into and have a little bit higher return. Something like Marcus and Sit, they have a 10 month and 11 month CD that is gonna earn you around 5% which is more. So I know this is a little bit long about Apple savings account. It's just that this seemed like a great opportunity to park your cash somewhere where it was a little more trusted than say just a random online bank where it took you five minutes to set up and then you know they expect you to put in a hundred thousand dollars of your money. <laughs> the thing is is now I feel that the backing of Apple and the size of Goldman Sachs gives me a place that can earn good high yield and have total security that my money is going to come back to me. What do you think? Leave me a comment below and you can send me an email at bookings at todayinweb3.com. Speaking of cash, Zimbabwe is going to introduce a gold-backed digital currency. The country's central bank wants people to exchange their Zim dollars for the gold-backed token so they can hedge against the currency's volatility. So what kind of volatility are we talking about? Well, <laughs> this month was Zimbabwe's lowest inflation rate of 87.6%. The situation is so bad in Zim that it's led businesses to print their own money, often handwritten on scraps of paper. Now, this is hard to imagine, say, if you're in the U.S. or the U.K., but imagine turning paper or going to get to your printer and getting paper and writing $100 on it so they can redeem it for your goods and services. That's extreme. But this, however, shows the trend in the Middle East and in African countries. Cryptocurrency adoption has grown over there quite significantly, with over... $566 billion in crypto transactions from July of 2021 to June of 2022, which is up 48% from the previous year. In more currency news, the Chinese government is going to be paying more employees in the digital yuan. Public sector employees in the Chinese city of Changshu will start receiving their salaries in the CBDC next month. This is all part of China's CBDC rollout. So what is a CBDC? A CBDC is basically a stablecoin, and it's one-to-one -one backed by the Chinese yuan, and it's controlled by their government or their central bank. So far, 11 countries have rolled out a CBDC with more, including the United States, studying the whole process, and there's a lot of people advocating for it here as well. Here's a quick PSA for anybody who has Trust Wallet. When did you open the account? Was it between November 14th and November 23 of last year? If so, that means you're part of one of the 500 wallets that are still vulnerable to hacks. If your wallet is vulnerable hacks and it does get hacked, then you will be getting a refund from Trust Wallet. However, you should know that maybe you want to take precautions, create a new wallet, and make sure you use good hygiene when it comes to storing your private keys. These affected wallets were created through a browser extension. So if you were using the Trust Wallet app, you don't have to worry about it. If you use the browser extension and you created it around that time, I would worry about it. In some legal news, Board Ape creator Yuga Labs claims trademark legal victory over copycat NFTs. So what happened was that somebody created identical copies of the original Board Ape Yacht Club profile pictures as a parody. And they said that this was protected under the First Amendment rights. But Yuga Labs said that this copycat project was scamming buyers with falsely equivalent NFTs in a deliberate effort to harm Yuga Labs at the expense of customers. Long story short, the judge agreed. Yuga said that this is a big win for us and it's a win for the entire Web3 industry to hold scammers and counterfeiters accountable. Trademark and copyright attorney Jessica McDonald, she tweeted this. The court echoes similar statements that the company's project fails to make a threshold legal showing that it's an expressive artistic work protected by the First Amendment. In particular, it merely points to the same online digital images associated with Board Ape Yacht Club collection. Basically, they just knocked it off. There's no artistic creativity. It's not a parody. There's no... Um, added benefit, added creativity, added uh, IP involved, they just knocked it off. As a result, Yuga is entitled to monetary damages and injunctive relief. Now, let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. The time is 9.38 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, and last week with the market dip, $650 million of longs were liquidated. So, what does the price look like today? Well, we have Bitcoin sitting at $27,535, down 0.3% in 24, 6.5% in 7, Ethereum is down 10.3% in 7, at $1,860, down 0.7% in 24. Tether's number 3, Binance Coin is at 332, up 0.3% in 24, and USDC is number 5, running off the top 10. We have XRP, Cardano, Doge, Polygon, and Solana. The total market cap is at 1.15 trillion. We have a BTC dominance of 45.8 and an F dominance of 19.2. And that was our show today. Thank you very much for listening. Please, again, share, and I will see you tomorrow. 
Happy hodling, everyone. Hey everyone, the bull run is coming. It's coming quick. And you need to be up to date on everything that's happening in the Web3 space. So please follow us on Twitter and like, subscribe, share these videos so we can keep you up to date daily on Web3 News.